Fountain Springs is one church that meets in multiple locations. I'm Pastor Todd, I'm the East Location Pastor, and I'm standing here at East, that's located in Rapid City across from the fairgrounds. And although we meet in multiple locations, our service elements are the same. So you'll see dynamic worship, and you'll see incredible kids ministry happening. And on top of that, you'll see our heartbeat is the same across all these locations, and that is to show people who Jesus is throughout the Black Hills. But I also wanted to invite you. We'd love for you to come and visit and check out and have the experience of going to the East location. We know that life is better together, and as a church, we value community. It's how we grow, how we learn, and how we serve each other. Community happens during our weekly services and our large gatherings, but it can't stop there. We need to go deeper. It happens in small groups, it happens over coffee, it happens over the phone, it happens with friends and family and neighbors. Not being able to gather at a large scale has been hard for us. There's no question about that. But it's also been teaching us. It's pushing us into connection in other ways and maybe ways we've always needed. We have the opportunity to seize this time, to go deep, and to build connections. You can come out of this stronger and closer than ever before. A perfect way to start is by hosting a watch party. What is a watch party? It's simply a group of friends, family, or neighbors setting a time to get together and engage with church online. Decide on your level of comfort and invite someone in. You can set up a Zoom meeting, a room on Facebook, or a video chat while streaming a service. It's meeting in backyards or parking lots where you can watch on a phone or computer together. It's opening up your living room to worship together and maybe even sharing a meal. It's getting creative and using your imagination and asking, how can I grow? And how can I invite someone to grow with me? Pick up your phone, send a text, knock on a door, and invite some people to watch church with you this weekend. Go to watchparty.fs.church to find out more. You're not alone in this time. We're here to help you on your way. Let's build community, connection, and grow deeper together. Hello, I wanna welcome you to our church online. At Fountain Springs, we believe that anyone and everyone matters, and our mission is to show people who Jesus is, wherever they are. We have a community of people that are meeting all over the world, watching exactly the same service at the same time, and here's the best part, experiencing God together. So no matter where you are today, no matter what you're walking through in life, hear me, you are not alone. Church is coming to you, and we are excited that you have joined us. 
As you get ready for our online experience, I just wanna walk you through just some quick rundowns of what to expect. So here's what it's gonna start off with. It's gonna be some amazing music. And then you'll get to hear and, and we'll share about what God is doing in the life of our church. And then lastly, you'll hear a message from one of our pastors. Now, throughout this next hour, our hope is that you'll encounter God, experience life change, and find community. You may have some preconceived notions about online church, but church gatherings, no matter where they happen, are still about people. To get the full community experience, be sure to participate in our chat section. This is an opportunity for you to build relationships with people here locally and around the world, and you can share your questions, praises, or if you're willing to be vulnerable, your struggles in life. But thank you so much for joining us today, and we are all better when we live life together. Welcome to a service from Fountain Springs Church. We exist to show people who Jesus is in the Black Hills and around the world. We are so glad you joined us today. In just a moment, the band will be leading us through song, and then we're going to jump right into part four of our series entitled God. Wherever you are, please join us as we sing.
As long as you're in it, the story's not finished. I know you've overcome, so I know I'll overcome. As long as you're in it, the story's not finished. I know you've overcome, so I know I'll overcome. As long as you're in it, the story's not finished. I know you overcome, so I know I'll overcome. As long as you're in it, the story's not finished. I know you overcome, so I know I'll overcome. Let that breakthrough, miracle, power pour out. I need a breakthrough, miracle, moment right now. Only in you and with my victory is found. Bring that breakthrough, miracle, power, let it rain down. Let that breakthrough, miracle, power, let it rain down. The cross stands before me. It is finished, it is done. Yeah, I heard you told death it was over. So in your name, I claim this fight. seen what you can do oh god of wonder your power has no end the things you've done before in greater measure you will do again there's no prison or you can't break through no Mountain, you can move all things are possible. There's no broken body you can raise, no soul that you can save. All things are possible. Come on, you say the darkest night.
Lord, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you that that is something that you graciously pour out on us. Lord, I pray that we would be aware of your presence in this room, that we would be aware of your presence when we leave this room, that we would be aware of your presence as we walk down the streets, as we go about our work lives, as we go about our home lives. Lord, I pray that we would be aware that you are present with us in every moment. Lord, we thank you that that is something we can count on. We love you, and in your name we pray. Amen. One of the verses in the Bible that has been an anchor in my life is Malachi 3.10. It says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if it will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. About eight years ago, my husband and I went through what was probably the toughest time that we had financially. This resulted in an eviction, repossession of a vehicle, and eventually led to bankruptcy. I never imagined that I would be bankrupt at 25. That's not every little girl's dream. Through this incredibly tough time, we still knew that God had called us to be generous with our finances. So we continued to give to God through Fountain Springs. It wasn't easy, but knowing that God knows what's best and only wants His best for us, we trusted Him. We had seen His provision before, and we were trusting that He would continue to provide. Fast forward to December of 2020, we received a letter in the mail from a bank's dealer services. It had said that due to an error in fees from a repossessed vehicle, they discovered that they had overcharged us on the repossession and attached was a check. I read it three times and eventually said to my husband, this has got to be a scam. So I read it to him and he jumped off of the couch and yelled, this is why we tie. We don't tithe because we are expectant to get something back. We tithe because we trust that God will provide for us no matter what. I know that it is not everybody's story that they will get an unexpected check in the mail, but I can tell you that if you give to God and trust in Him, He will pour out blessings that you could never imagine. To think back on the hardest part of our lives and see that God had blessings waiting for us seven years later that flowed out of our obedience to give to Him during our toughest time is so encouraging. It reminds me that when I trust God with my finances, blessings flow and I learn to trust God in other areas of my life. I want to encourage you today to trust God through your finances and to do it for the long haul not for the purpose of receiving anything from God, but to grow in your relationship with Him through trusting that He will provide. You can give today on our app or by going to give.fs.church. Let's pray. God, I just praise you for um, how you provide for us, um, that that you can pour out blessings to us when we are obedient with what you're asking us to do. God, I pray for those who um, 
are wanting to take that first step of uh, listening to your call on their life, God, I just pray um, that you um, that you can just remind them that you are good and that you are trustworthy and you will provide for them. In your name, amen. Friends, it's so good to be with you today. Those of you in the room, uh, it's so good to be, to be with you. If you're at East or online or on TV or somewhere digital, welcome to Fountain Springs. I'm so happy to be here and to have the honor of sharing with you. It was about 10 years ago, I was in a ministry that traveled around the U.S. and Canada, working with students in middle school and high school, primarily leading them in worship through music. This one time we got a contract for about a weekend-ish long thing in Santa Fe, New Mexico. We're based out of Eastern Canada, and so we said, why not? And so the day after Christmas, we decided to leave and drive 40 hours straight from like the very top corner of Canada, well, Eastern corner, all the way down to Santa Fe, New Mexico. We spent four days there, and then New Year's Day, got back in the van and began our 40-hour trip back home to Canada. We were young and crazy and whatever. Uh, we had a great time, and we're happy to get back on the road. And we're just cruising along, living the dream. And uh, we're trying to make pretty good time, because one of our guys with us was filling in. He was a teacher and began classes for the next semester in two days. So we're driving quick. Uh, we're about 10 hours into the drive at about 2 a.m. We're just cruising along, having a good time, trying to stay awake. And then the gauges on the van begin to kind of drop off and then come back. And the lights begin to fade out and come back on. And we're not van experts. We know something is wrong, though. <laughs> and this keeps happening over and over again. And finally, the van dies. So we know we're in trouble. We get it started and just gun the vehicle. We finally make an exit, and the van dies again. We throw it in neutral and just start coasting. And we just coast the van and coast the van, and finally into the seedy, sketchy motel. And we stay the night there. The next day we get up, we're like, it's probably the battery. We walk to O'Reilly's, grab a battery, walk it back to the van, put it in, hit the road again, and we're off. Life is good for about an hour. And then we get further down the road, and the same thing starts happening. And finally, we just coast off to the side of the freeway ramp, and we're perplexed. We start praying, God, what are we going to do? It's Saturday. It's New Year's Day weekend. Nothing is open. We have to get back on time. This guy's going to lose his job. And I have no idea what's wrong or how to fix this van. And so we hop out of the vehicle, open the hood, pretend to know what we're looking at. We're musicians, so we have no idea. It's just tubes and knobs and square and round things. And all of a sudden, this 1980s Bronco pulls off the road in front of us. And this thing is trashed. So the back window's missing. The back seat's just garbage. And this giant mountain of a man with about a five-inch beard steps out of the vehicle. And I'm thinking, we've been praying for a miracle? This is going to be a murder scene pretty soon here. <laughs> and the guy walks back to us, and we're a little questionable, and we're a little bit nervous about what this guy wants. And he says, <clears throat> in a really like deep southern voice, he's, what's wrong, boys? <laughs> and we explain the issue to him, and he says, well, sounds like the alternator. Begins to dismantle our van on the side of the highway. And I'm just thinking, does he know what he's doing? because I hope he can put it back together. <laughs> anyway, he gets the alternator out, says, let's go to AutoZone. The guys look at me, and I look at them, and we kind of give the nod. So I get in the Bronco with this guy, 
And the floor of the Bronco is just coffee cups everywhere. It's just it's like wading through a sea of coffee cups. And I get in this vehicle and we take off. I wave my final farewell to the boys. <laughs> say, I hope I see you again someday. We get to AutoZone. The thing fails the test. We buy a new alternator, drive back, thankfully. We get back to the side of the road. And the guy puts the alternator in our van, gets it going, won't take any payment, drives off into the sunset. We hop back in the vehicle and continue on our way. And we're, what? We're, we were just praying for a miracle. And this guy shows up and gives us a miracle on the side of the highway in 40 degree weather. Um, over the course of my life, I've seen God do some crazy stuff, come through for me in awesome ways like that that uh, don't make any sense. In 2014, I moved here from Eastern Canada. I came across the country with two Tupperware totes and a backpack. I heard what was happening at Fountain Springs, and I said, I want to be a part of that. So I came all the way here and was excited for what God was going to do in me and through me at Fountain Springs. I was here about five weeks, and I got a phone call. And it's my family, and they call me and tell me that um, my dad has cancer. And he'd had it before in the 90s, uh, and he'd beaten it. But this time it was back, and it was vicious, and it had spread. Well, I'd seen God do miracles. I knew God was faithful. Um, We prayed and we hoped, uh, but he died in November of that year. And I began to ask myself, God, where are you? I thought that you were trustworthy. What happened to your faithfulness? This month, we're in a series going through one verse in the book of Exodus, chapter 34, verse 6. And it says, The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger and abounding in loyal love and faithfulness. It's those last two terms we're going to talk about today. These terms, loyal love and faithfulness, often occur together throughout the text. Um, In the original language, there are the words chesed, which is just fun to say. Uh, That's loyal love, and the word emet, which is faithfulness. And this word emet has these connotations of trustworthy, firm, faithful, sturdy. And God's saying to Moses, that's the kind of God that I am. Well, today, can we get a little nerdy together? (laughs) I am really excited, and we're going to, okay? We're going to backtrack a little in the story into the book of Genesis. Uh, This is a foundational text for the Israelite people because it's about their forefather, their founding father of the faith, Abram or Abraham. And God's with Abraham, and this happens. It says, The Lord took him, Abraham, outside and said, gaze into the sky and count the stars, if you're able to count them. Then he said to him, so will your descendants be. Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord credited as righteousness to him. The Lord said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. There's two things I want you to see in this passage, two promises. The first one, Abraham is promised by God descendants, a people, heirs. And he's promised a land for those people to possess, to be free, and to rule in. This word I mentioned a second ago, emet, translated faithfulness, actually appears in its root form for the very first time as a verb. And it's right here when it says, Abraham believed the Lord, and the Lord credited to him as righteousness. Abraham believed that God would be faithful to his promise. So today, I want to take us to four locations. And these four locations uh, have theological meaning. And the first one is this. We're going to go to Egypt. Now, Egypt is an important place in Israel's history. That's where we meet Moses, the guy God was talking to in our very first verse. In Egypt, the Israelite people have grown. 
They've multiplied. They've become fruitful and are expanding across this land. In fact, they're growing in numbers so much uh, that the pharaoh of Egypt is worried they're going to overthrow the Egyptians and take the land from them. So the Egyptian pharaoh, he enslaves the Israelites. And so the Israelite people have grown. They've seen part of God's promise come true, but they're in a foreign land, not the good land God promised, and they're enslaved. So God comes to Moses and says, Moses, you're going to take them out of the land. And in a miraculous turn of events, he leads them out, parts the waters, and takes them into the desert and sets them free from their enslavement by the Pharaoh, which takes us from Egypt to Sinai. And Sinai is where that first passage in Exodus happened. Moses meets God on a mountain, and God gives Moses the Ten Commandments. It's at Sinai. The Israelites learn who their God is, what their God is like. Their God, Yahweh, is different. At Sinai, the Israelites learn what their calling is, is going to be, and they begin to solidify their identity as a people. After Sinai, they end up wandering in the desert for about 40 years. And they wander, but finally, they come to this land. In this land is going to be theirs. It's where they set up a kingdom. Uh, they build a temple and have a king on the throne. And they go from Sinai. You know, before we go on, um, I want to play a game with us. Is that cool? And I need participation, okay? So I want you to out loud respond back to me. If you're at East, just yell it out to the person next to you. If you're online, type it in the comments or yell at the person next to you. What I want us to do I'm going to quote a line from a movie, and I want you to tell me either who said it or what movie it came from, okay? Thumbs up? Thumbs up at East? We feeling good? All right. Here's the first one, and excuse my poor impressions. To infinity and beyond. That was Buzz Lightyear in a Toy Story. You guys are experts, obviously. That was easy. Okay, uh, here's one more for you. One of my favorites from childhood. You're killing me, Smalls. That was Ham, Hamilton Porter in The Sandlot. Uh, okay, here's a pretty easy one. I'll be back. Terminator in The Terminator. Okay, last one for the veteran movie watchers in the room. All right, here's looking at you, kid. Casablanca. That's Rick Blaine in Casablanca. When you hear these phrases, don't, don't they bring you back to a time in your life, to memories, to your childhood, to emotions you felt watching these movies? Just saying these words connected together carry more than just a word or a string of words. They carry a feeling. And so for the Israelite people, when these words together, chesed, emet, your loyal love and faithfulness come around, they're a call back to what happened on Sinai. They carry a feeling of what God is like. And so when we come to Jerusalem, we meet someone very important, and that's our third location, Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, we meet King David. And David is a great king. God loves David. He's far from perfect, but what's special about him is he is faithful to God and when he messes up, he repents. So God makes David a promise. And God says this. When the time comes for you to die, I'll raise up your descendant, one of your own sons, to succeed you. And I will establish his kingdom. He'll build a house for my name, and I'll make his dynasty permanent. My loyal love will not be removed from him. This sounds like Sinai language. It sounds like God's promise to Abram. And on David's deathbed, he repeats this promise to his son Solomon. He says, And the Lord will, will fulfill his promise to me. If your descendants watch their step and live faithfully in my presence with all their heart being and being, then he promised you will not fail to have a successor on the throne of Israel. God says that if Israel is faithful, emet, to God, 
God will be faithful, emmet, to them. This theme is woven throughout the text, throughout the Old Testament. If we go to Psalm uh, 89, it says, I will sing continually about the Lord's faithful deeds. To future generations, I will proclaim your faithfulness. For I say, loyal love is permanently established in the skies. You set up your faithfulness. Another Psalm, 138. Just kidding. Psalm 69. O oh Lord, may you hear my prayer and be favorably disposed to me. O oh oh God, because of your great loyal love, answer me with your faithful deliverance. David's in a tragic, traumatic time. And he cries out to God. He says, God, with your loyal love and faithfulness, would you deliver me? You get the point here? This idea that was given at Sinai has become woven into their belief, their core identity as a people, the Israelites, and who their God is, which takes us from Jerusalem to our last location, Babylon. You see, because the Israelites didn't remain faithful to their calling. In fact, they follow other gods. They disobey God's commandments and God's rules. And things get bad. They get so bad, there's basically a civil war. They split the kingdom into two halves. And on the world stage, other powers rise up. First, the Assyrians come to power and conquer the northern half. And then the Babylonians rise to power and conquer the southern half. And they take the Israelites from their home, the land God gave to them, and they exile them to Babylon. They're scattered. And the promise they was once fulfilled is now gone. And in Babylon, they're lost and broken and begin to wonder, God, where are you? As generations go by, they ask, God, what happened to your loyal love? What happened to your faithfulness? I thought you were going to be with us. Now we're back. Where we, it's like Egypt all over again. Uh, in that first psalm we read, it says this. How long, O Lord, will this last? Will you remain hidden forever? Will your anger continue to burn like fire? Where are your earlier faithful deeds, O Lord? The ones performed in accordance with your reliable oath to David. God, where are you? This is the same psalm we read before about how faithful God was. It's normal in life to have times where God feels really close. But you're going to have times, too, where he feels far in the depths of life. You will wonder at some point, God, where are you? When you don't have the answers for the questions of life, um, our Bible has some comforting questions that you can ask and sit with. You're not alone. The writers of the Bible said the same things. But the last line of the same psalm, um, something very important for us, it says, the Lord deserves praise forevermore. We agree, we agree. Even when you're in despair, in the low places, you can still praise God without the answers. In fact, sometimes that's the best thing you can do. So what's next? The Israelites are in Babylon, and they're broken and they're lost. Well, eventually, some of them return to Jerusalem, but it's a portion, and they rebuild some of the temple, but it isn't what it was. And finally, other powers come along, the Persians, the Greeks, and finally the Romans. And the Romans occupy Jerusalem, and they essentially enslave the Israelites through taxation in their own land. And for hundreds of years, they're asking, God, where is your loyal love? And that's where our New Testament starts. The book of Matthew, the first few verses, they begin with a genealogy. And usually, genealogies are really boring. And we want to skip them over because they're just people's names. But in light of what we've been talking about, I want us to read this. Matthew 1.1. This is the record of the genealogy of Jesus, 
Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Matthew wants us to know that Jesus is the answer. Who sits on the throne when the king passes? It's the son of the king. The son of the king is the heir to the throne. And Jesus is the son of David. Come along. For Matthew, Jesus is the answer to the question, is God loyally loving and faithful? Matthew says, yes. Jesus is the son of David, the son of Abraham, and he has come. Later on in Matthew, uh, there's another story, and uh, it goes like this. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men began to follow him, shouting, Have mercy on us, son of David. These blind men see who Jesus is. See, the people of Israel expected a king like David, a king like David's son Solomon, who would rule, who would conquer. And what they got was a king who came to heal, who came to save us, who came to preach good news to the poor. The king they got wasn't the king they were expecting, but it was the king that they needed. And this is a thousand years after David. We're actually about as far from the year 3000 as David was to Jesus. Things don't always happen in the same time frame that we want. And just because God doesn't work in our time frame doesn't mean that he isn't faithful. When his ways don't look how we expect, when he works differently, that doesn't mean that God isn't trustworthy. So if God doesn't always look how we expect him to, he doesn't always show up in the time frames we expect, well, what does God's faithfulness mean? What does it do for us? Um, here's a, a verse for you in John. It says, In this world, you will have trouble and suffering. Well, that wasn't like the best news. I, like, I usually like happier promises, like, life's going to be great. But Jesus says, in this world, you'll have trouble and suffering. But he goes on and he says, but take courage, I have conquered the world. Jesus is bigger than any of our problems. The king who has come to fulfill God's promise has overcome the world. Later on uh, in Matthew, one of the last things that Matthew says, he says, Therefore go, quoting Jesus, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. When we follow God's plan, he promises to be with us through everything. I mentioned that um, I moved here in 2014. Um, I actually came here for a visit in August, the year before 2013. And when I was here, I just loved this church and this place, and I spent two months here. But then I'm being Canadian, I had to go back to Canada and wait for a new visa to come through. And so I end up back in Canada, thinking it would be a couple of months, and then month after month goes by. And I'd been on my own, I'm mid-20s, I'd travel the world, and all of a sudden I'm living in mom's basement again, waiting to like figure out when is life going to happen for me. And I wait, and I wait, and I wait. Seven months go by, and I'm like, God, what are you doing? Where is your faithfulness? What's your plan in this? What are you waiting for? Well, those seven months I spent there before I moved here, they were some of the best times I had with my dad. They were, our relationship was the strongest I think it's ever been during those seven months. When I felt like I was in this wilderness 
wondering like, when am I going to get to the land you promised me, God, where you called me? I didn't know what was happening at the time. But I don't for a second now look back and wonder, was God faithful to me? What a gift he gave me those seven months. Could he have given me anything better? I don't know. Don't let your situation define what you think about God's faithfulness. There will be times in life where God doesn't move how you expect him to or in the time you expect him to. It might take a thousand years, but God is still faithful. What I want you to know is that our God is compassionate He's a gracious God and he's slow to anger. He's loyally loving and he's faithful. I've seen that in my life and I believe that if you trust God, if you follow him and follow his ways, if you are faithful, if you are emet to God, he will be faithful to you. Not always in the ways you expect, but I believe he will. Let's pray together. God, thank you for who you are. Um, for all the qualities we've been learning about this past month. And for proving them to be true over days and years and millennia. The God you were back with Moses on Mount Sinai is the God you are today. When we're in times of trouble, Help us to believe that. Help us to hold on to the promises that you've made. You'll be with us. You're alongside of us, and you've overcome the world. We love you, God, and pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, everybody. I, I, I gave you an update uh, a while ago that, uh, well, post-COVID, we... We were talking about like what do we do? We, did, we used to have Saturday services, and and then we when we regathered, we didn't have Saturday services, and we're trying to find out what works best. And so I told you a while ago that that we don't have Saturday services. We weren't planning on Saturday services, but we were actually looking at we need to add other services when. So here it is. Here you go. Uh, Coming soon, uh, September 12th is actually when we're gonna start. We're gonna do it for 11 weeks. We're gonna start it, do it 11 weeks and see how it goes. Sundays at four. Sundays at four, so you'll have uh, three options on Sundays, nine, 11, and four. And for those of you who love to sleep in, you're welcome. <laughs> so, so all the services will be exactly the same. You just get to choose which one. Now, uh, some of you are like, okay, I love this. I wanna be a part of it. Just go to our app, uh, our, our website, and you can get a ton more information, find out how to be involved in it, because the only way to make it work is if you and I together make it work. But we as a church want to provide enough seats for anyone and everyone. And so this fall, 11 weeks, we're going to try something. Sundays at 9, Sundays at 11, and soon Sundays at 4. Consider yourself invited. We're so excited to launch this new service on Sundays at 4 p.m. at our West location. This service will look similar to our morning services on Sunday, and if you're interested in attending or serving at this service and want more information, you can go to Sundays at 4.fs.church. If you've been attending for a while and you're not sure what to do now, the Next Steps experience is the perfect start. The Next Steps experience tells you a little bit more about Fountain Springs Church, our story, and how you can play a part in that story. Our Next Steps experience is coming up on August 2nd, here in a couple weeks, so go to nextsteps.fs.church to sign up and secure your spot. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we will see you next week. Digital and consistent giving has never been easier. It's as easy as sending a text from your phone. 
Simply pull out your phone and text the word GIVE to 605-299-8374. It's as simple as that. Thanks for helping us make a lasting impact in the Black Hills. Here at Fountain Springs, we believe in the next generation. We want you to know that we've made it easy for your kids to engage in a service that meets them at their level. There are three easy steps to take to access these services. Step one, download our app, launch your preferred app store and search for Fountain Springs Church. Step two, once you find it, download and open the app. Step three, on the front page, you will see an icon titled Kids Services. Just touch that image and pick the service for your appropriate age group. We have a service designed for preschool kids and a service designed for elementary kids. It's as easy as that. We hope your kids enjoy.